Hey everybody. I was rushing, rushing, rushing for like the last hour. So I have three projects ready to go tonight. So I am super excited about them and I hope that you guys like them all. Um, we are going to um, focus on, let me see if I have it right here, on this stamp set, Buffalo Check. Um, I know that it, the words are reversed, but it's fine. Um, so we're going to use our stamp or Stamparatus um, with this stamp set tonight, and we are going to use it, um, we're using it for all three of our cards, but we're only actually stamping it once since it's the same every time, because um, that helps me with the cleaning and stuff. So hi, Kayla. Um, sometimes it doesn't tell me who's here all the time. So if you're live with me tonight, um, then you can say hello. Um, and that way I know who all is here tonight. Um, so I'm super excited about these cards. I started off saying, I'm going to totally show non-Christmas cards because this stamp set can be used for all kinds of things. But all three of them, hi Susan, all three of them ended up being Christmas cards, which is totally fine because it made me excited to start creating more um, of my Christmas cards and I'm really behind. Hi Debbie. Um, so usually I have a lot more ideas in my head at this point, but because I'm doing full-time job now, um, both with childcare and um, the church office, I'm realizing how much more intentional I'm going to have to be when it comes to Christmas cards because they're not just going to fall out of my lap. So um, I was excited to use this Buffalo Check stamp set for tonight's cards. Um, we are also using glimmer paper on all three cards. So um, Stampin' Up's glimmer paper is the best glimmer paper ever. Um, they reformulated it for the new annual catalog and um, I can literally like rub it. Here, I'll show you with this piece. I can rub it on my hand and not have any mess. So it's so, so good. Um, so we are going to use that um, as well as the um, glimmer paper pack that is in our holiday catalog as well. So I'm super excited about them. The other things I wanted to talk about are November 1st, there will be a, um, a suite um, available that has different items in it. I shared a picture on my Facebook page just to kind of give a sneak peek to what those um, items are going to be. Hi, Lynn! Um, and so I just thought if I gave a, a little sneak peek on, on those goodies um, before November 1st, that would be good for everybody to kind of get a look at them. I think I shared a little bit last week on that. Um, I have the other stamp set is on its way to me right now. I can't remember what day it's supposed to get here. but um, So I'm working on a couple of those projects and... Um, Another thing I did want to talk about is that next Sunday, um, I will not be doing a Facebook Live. Um, we have our church's trunk or treat, um, and I will be at the church from 8 o'clock in the morning till probably 5.30, 6 o'clock at night, and so I just am anticipating being exhausted um, from that event. So I am going to try to post something during the week um, around Sunday, um, to kind of tie you over, I guess. Um, the other thing is that we're going to, um, then have next, the Sunday after that will be November 4th. And so even though it's my youngest birthday, we're still going to have a live that night and I will be showing those snowflake, um, showcase on that night. So give a little bit more time for me to get that ready. So I think that that is all that I needed to chat about tonight, um, but I am super excited to get started. So I'm going to flip the camera around and then we'll get to crafting. All right. 
I did a little bit of practicing, but not with my stand. So, oh, there we go. Let's see. And I will warn you, there is a very annoying in this room right now. So, so sorry. That was way worse than I was anticipating. So if it goes in front of the camera, I really apologize. <laughs> it has been flying and trying to land right on my head and everything. So we are going to stick with that for our stamping tonight. Another thing I wanted to show you that Stampin' Up! has come out with um, is the small grid paper. So very exciting. It fits on your Stamparatus um, so that you don't have to trim your other grid paper in order to have um, a background paper um, for your crafting. So I am just gonna tear one out. The one that I used for my practice is super messy. So we're just going to take this off. Hi, Mama. Take this one off and put our magnet on there. And then our stamp is all ready to go. The stamp that we are going to use, the stamp set, um, is Buffalo Check for this. And um, so I just wanted to kind of share um, how awesome the Stamparatus is for these full-sized um, stamps. This is like a solid one stamp and it is probably my favorite one that they have come out with in the catalog. So I'm going to flip it this way actually and I'm going to put the case underneath it so that there's more of a solid surface for that. I'm also going to turn on my computer here quick so that I can catch comments just in case. So we're going to start off, actually, um, with the card I made last while I was practicing. And I have some of the pieces cut out already um, for this one. I did not punch that one out yet, but I wasn't sure how long they would take me tonight, so I wanted to get as much of it done as I could. And I apologize in advance if I sneeze. My nose has been running. We had a very, very windy day here yesterday, and I think it blew up a whole bunch of stuff that was bugging me before. So, so I'm going to try really hard not to be a sniffly mess for you guys, um, but we will just power through. So I'm just going to click on this one, and then we should be able to see comments. Okay. So, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. If I can figure it out, there we go. There we go. And I'm going to hope that that isn't super crooked, um, but we should be okay on that. Okay, so what we're going to use for our first um, card today is we are going to use our Stazon um, Jet Black ink. And Stazon is the ink that they recommend that you use for watercoloring. Um, now that we do not have our archival basic black ink. Um, so I typically use um, our Memento Tuxedo Black um, ink more than I use this one. I've actually only used the Stazon probably three or four times since I got it. Um, just because you have to use a specific kind of cleaner, which I can show you here. This um, stays on cleaner is what you use to clean and condition this stamp after you're done. And so it's just one more step than I was used to. So um, it's this ink is amazing and I'm really thankful that I've at least tried it out. Um, but what we're going to do is we inked up the whole stamp and I have my paper kind of lined up but my stamp is not super particular and we are going to move that up just a little bit because I had a feeling it was not going to be long enough and so then we're just going to hold press this down 
just a little bit just to make sure that ink catches and then we are gonna pull it back like that I have a little bobby pin that I take just to do that with it just to take it off of that stamp um, but that is what our Buffalo check looks like there so we are actually going to use this type of a pattern on all of our cards but this is the only one that we're actually going to stamp with the Stamparatus today um, because I did all of them the exact same way that I did this one just to take a little bit of the step away from us there so I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to clean that later and we will start putting this card together so we're going to put that there for our base card we are using a tranquil tide base and I cut it at four and a quarter by 11 and then I scored it at five and a half so that is our base layer there and I use my bone folder to just seal down the edge there um, a couple of these cards I kind of like to go on Pinterest every once in a while and take little bits from different cards so the um, these pieces were actually inspired by um, a card that I saw on Pinterest so we are going to be layering those together and then I have my little let's see where's my paper piercer it's sitting over here um, so we are going to make this card first. Um, I really liked how the sparkle was on that card. Um, so I thought that would be a fun one to try. So we are going to complete this one. And I can't remember what colors they had or who, even who it was. I was just kind of browsing and in a hurry. So I will try to post a link um, on my page if I can go back and find it um, for you guys. But um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna layer our our buffalo check piece using our snail adhesive. Just putting, I usually just do one on each side and then one down the center of that one. This is our whisper white cardstock, and this is our basic black cardstock. And I will tell you that our basic black tends to um, be a little bit thicker and sometimes has little um, edges that aren't quite as fine. And so um, I typically just use my finger to rub um, them like backwards, kind of like this, so that those edges don't show. Sometimes I miss them, sometimes I don't. And that is not 100% straight, so you'll have to forgive me on that one. So what we're going to do is we're going to layer that down on our um, Tranquil Tide. And the reason that I used the Tranquil Tide is because um, these um, glimmer paper pieces are from our, no, where did I put it? There they are. Um, our holiday catalog. And this is from the Joyous Noel Glimmer Paper Pack. And it comes with the copper... The Mary Merlot, which is on the top, and the Tranquil Tide colors. And so we are using all three of those in this card today. And so that is why I focused with the black and white um, Buffalo Check um, pattern, because I really felt like it made those colors stand out a lot better on this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab some glue dots, and I just realized that my last roll of glue dots was running out so I'm going to get out a new box of our mini glue dots and we are going to take our little pieces here these pine pieces are from our let me see if I can find it um pretty pines thinlet dies this one was in last year's holiday catalog I believe and so those are the different pieces that are in there um they're beautiful and really easy cuts um, but I cut out all of those pieces ahead of time because it's a lot of die cut work so we are gonna do a couple of pieces on the big shot so I figured that we would just save the time on this so we're gonna start 
by layering the bigger pieces first of the little um, greenery pieces. I'm just putting a couple of glue dots at the top here. Hopefully I'm not making you dizzy. And then we are gonna layer that right at the top there. We are also going to do the same thing with these smaller greenery pieces and do the two glue dots fairly close at the top. And that one we're gonna put out just a little bit higher than the bottom ones. This card is gonna come together a lot faster because I did all that die cut work. But since we were doing three cards, I really, it's been so long since I've done that many that I wasn't sure if I was gonna have the time to do all three of them that way. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these cute little pine cones that I did with the copper um, glimmer paper. And like I have, I've been rubbing my hands on this glimmer paper and I have no marks on my hands. My hands are covered in ink um, because one of the other cards that we're working on um, tonight was a lot more messy than I anticipated. And so I had to learn a couple of lessons when it came to how I wanted to stamp on um, the Buffalo check stamp, but also how I wanted to clean it. Um, because I learned that when I'm using my um, Stampin' Chamois, or Simply Chamois, I think is what it's called, um, it gets a lot more dirty a lot quicker when you are using those full-size stamps. And so it was very, very messy when I was creating um, that next one. So that is just that Mary Merlot piece at the top. And we just kind of stuck those right all on top of each other. Um, but they're super, super pretty. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that on this one. But then all we have left on this card is the sentiment. Um, and that is how fast this one is going to come together. It's a lot of glue dots, but that glimmer paper really does um, stand out so, so beautifully. Um, for our sentiment today, we are going to use um, the Snowflake Sentiments stamp set. And we are going to use the Wrapped in the Warmth of Christmas. Um, I think both of the first two cards that we're doing tonight are with the... Hi, Jenna! are with um, stamps that are that say warmth or warm in their greeting um, because there's just something about that buffalo check that reminds me of a warm a warm flannel shirt so we are just inking up our Mary Merlot ink pad and I'm going to try to be straight on this one because I was not straight on the other one that I did so it's pretty similar all right so that is the ink the inking that we're doing today on that card and I'm gonna set that one aside I think I have all of my my stamp blocks so that I don't have to share tonight so what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna kind of tuck it into our greenery there and then I'll lift it up after I'm done I'm just using my snail adhesive to put that down because I kind of want um, the glimmer paper to, to be um, standing out more than popping up my sentiment here. So we're just going to tuck that in right there and flip that over to do three long bits of tape with our snail. So I'm going to try to get this one straight on there. There's this the teeniest little border on this one. And so I think that that came out super cute. So I have two of those um, that I did. One is my practice one, and then one is the one we just did right now. But those, um, if you have kind of a, an assembly line for cutting out your die cuts, um, this card would be super, super easy to make multiples of it um, because it's very minimal stamping. Um, and you're using the glimmer paper that is going to stand out so, so great. 
So that one is super easy, but it has a big wow factor. So that's the first one that we're working on tonight. So I will set that stamp set aside, kind of clean up a little bit. Um, and then the next one that we're working on has a little bit of die cutting that we're gonna do. And I forgot we do get to use our Buffalo plaid or Buffalo check stamp again. So I need to clean my my stamparatus just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my stays on cleaner and just kind of go through it on the stamp. And I will tell you that I have not had my stays on cleaner for very long. So if I'm doing this cleaning thing wrong by just using it directly on my stamp and someone else knows that you shouldn't be doing that, be sure to let me know because <laughs> I would love to hear tips on how um, it is best recommended to clean it. I'm going to just take it off and use my, my old scrubbing mat to clean it. I'm just... I put the cleaner on there and I'm just gonna scrub it up. This one is only for my stays on cleaner now. So I'm just gonna take that and it's still a little bit dirty. And so I might clean it now with the regular, um, but I don't have the stickers on the back and so it's fairly easy to clean. Um, so I'm just gonna take that in my other cleaning pad really fast. I forgot that I had not done that one. So that is totally fine. You guys will bear with me. Hi, Shelly. Here, I'll, I'll leave up the card that we just made first so that you guys can look at that while you wait for me to clean this stamp. I totally forgot we were gonna use it again. So I'm just gonna clean up the stamp just a little bit more. That's one thing with using the same big, big stamp. You just have to clean it a lot more often. So I'm gonna try to put it back down where I had the other one on there and smush that right down. Thank you, guys. So then what we are going to do is I'm gonna get my case back out for my Buffalo check and put that underneath just so that I have a surface to stamp on. And this one, we are using Poppy Parade cardstock cut at five and a half by four and a quarter. So four and a quarter by five and a half. Actually, that is eight and a half by five and a half. So sorry, scored at four and a quarter. My bad. So we are using um, the same color on our layer there. So I'm just going to put that down there. And then for our stamp color, um, instead of doing a black on the red, we are actually going to use Early Espresso because I wanted to highlight um, a little bit of the wood tones in this Wood Textures um, Designer Series paper. Um, and so I really liked how that layered on the red. Um, so we're mixing it up a little bit tonight and we are using the Early Espresso ink on our buffalo check. So I'm just inking up um, with the ink right on the stamp. Sometimes I twist it and then go back over tapping it. Um, but um, I really don't mind when the stamping um, from the buffalo check is a lighter um, shade. Um, it doesn't have to be super saturated um, cause I kind of like when it's looking a little bit more rustic looking. Um, so we're just going to smush this part down here and make sure that we got coverage just like that. That's exactly what I was talking about. So it's pretty, um, light, lightly stamped. Um, my early espresso needs inked really, really bad. Um, and so when I practiced this one the first time, I really liked that it came out that way. So that does not bother me at all. Uh, if I have a fully inked um, ink pad, then it would come out a lot more saturated. 
um, with that there. All right, so I am going to just double check my, my layers, make sure that I'm doing the right ones. Um, and I will be using my um, early espresso on our sentiment. So while we have our ink out, we will just do that quick. On this one, we are using a sentiment from the um, Hearts Come Home. I have all of my stuff stacked above here. The Hearts Come Home stamp set. Um, we are using the Enjoy the Warmth of the Season on this one. And we are going to stamp the sentiment in the Poppy Parade to match our red cardstock. And then we will uh, be sponging along the edges of our stitched shape framelit, which we used in the last card as well. I forgot to mention that. Um, I use these stitched shapes on probably, oh goodness, way more cards than I thought I would. Um, so these are the framelits that we are using from, or for the, this card. Actually, I used it in all three. So that framelit set is wonderful. So we're gonna set that one aside. And then we are going to take our early espresso, and I should probably close up this one because just my luck, I would forget which color I was stamping in. So I'm gonna move that over here as well. Ready for cleanup. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our sponge with our early espresso and kind of go around the edge of our stitched shape framelit here. Just little bits at a time around that edge. Nothing perfect at all. So that is what that is going to look like. And now I'm going to move our ink over and I'm going to grab our big shot to do just a little bit of die cutting. I will set these pieces aside. This is the piece we're going to use to die cut. And then we have one punch that we're gonna be doing as well. So we will set that over there and get out our big shot here. And I have my precision base plate as well as, let me see if I can find our little tree that we're gonna use. We are using the Nature's Roots Framelit Dies. Um, and this one comes with that Rooted in Nature suite. Um, but we are going to use these two little trees here to cut out on that glimmer paper. And we are going to use, you can see that I was practicing with this same piece there. And then this is just one clear plate over our precision base and our magnetic platform that I have here as far as my, my layers go. And we just need to put that through one time. And that is plenty because this is not an intricate cut. So it goes through really, really easily. That one, there we go. So that is our trees that we're gonna use. Hi, Jules, um, on our card there. So I will set this part aside and we will do a little bit of a punch using our triple banner punch. So I'm gonna set our big shot aside and we'll use that one more time tonight. Oh yeah, that Rooted in Nature bundle is amazing. I actually waited until I had saved up um, some reward points um, because I knew that I really, really wanted it. Hi, Jordan. Um, I really, really wanted it, but I knew that it was one of the more pricey ones in the catalog, so I saved up some of my flex points for it. So this is the Banner Triple Punch, and we are just gonna use that right there. And then we are gonna trim it just 
probably so that we have four and a half just about that much off of the six so probably inch and a half off of that and then we are going to start putting this card together we will be using if I can remember where I put it I had some twine is that this one nope where did I put it there it is okay I used I am going to use this braided hi Nate um, braided linen trim um, on this card as well so we'll leave this card here and kind of see it still so that was our first card and then this banner triple is probably one of my most used punches you can do it in two inches and one and a half and then one inch um, I have also used it for smaller pieces as well so that one is a great punch to have in your collection. So what we're gonna do on this one is we're gonna use our snail adhesive to put our poppy parade that we did the buffalo check stamp on. We're gonna put that down on a piece of early espresso cardstock, um, right like that, just a tiny, tiny little border. Um, and then use snail on our little banner piece and we're gonna put it on this side and I'm putting it all the way to the top of the early espresso um, just like that um, so that it goes higher this one might even be a little longer than what I did my tester on but I think that's okay so, and then we're gonna take our little trees that we used um, from that that same um, paper pack, the Glimmer Paper, the Joyous Noel. Uh, this um, pack comes with 24 pieces of those three colors, and I have barely made a dent in it. And I al also used it in my scrapbook layout, which I'm not sure where I put. put. So I'll, I'll have to look for it when we're finished. Um, and then I'm just gonna stick our trees right on our sentiment there just like that just for a little bit of sparkle and we're going to pop that one up with stampin dimensionals so i just need to find where i put those okay so we're going to stamp or pop those up with some dimensionals i am using up some dimensionals from a uh, an old paper pumpkin kit paper pumpkin is the if you don't know is the monthly um subscription that stampin up has um that they will send you a box every every month usually they don't send them out until after the 10th of the month thanks shelly um because you have until the 10th to order for the next month or for that current month um, that was a little confusing. You have until the 10th of every month to get the month kit that you are in. Um, and then if you order the kit after the 10th of the month, you would get the following month, that kit. So I opened mine, but didn't, I opened it just to peek at the kit, but I'm not going to pull it out until, um, the... First Friday in November where I'm um, hanging out at my church for a hobby night and so I'm bringing a couple of my kits that one is being stubborn I'm bringing a couple of my kits um, in case there are any ladies there that don't have a hobby that they um, have to work on um, so that I can share my kit with with the other ladies that might still want to come but not really know what to do so we are going to tie our braided trim. I'm sorry if my nose is sniffling again. This is probably the longest stretch I've gone without sneezing all afternoon. So that is a good thing. <laughs> so we're just going to take our braided linen trim and we're going to put it around our card just like that. And we're going to do the cheater method that I learned from Robin, my pink stamper. She's my team leader. She's been doing the cheater method for the whole time that I've known her, which is probably 11, 
plus years because I was pregnant with my son, Brayden, when I started following her, which ironically, her youngest, or I think, she, yeah, her youngest's name is Brayden as well, and they are the same age, so that's really fun. Oh, <laughs> you're okay, Nate. It's fun that you get to hang out with us. So before I tie my bow, I'm going to take my steel adhesive, and I'm actually going to do three full strips of the snail adhesive on this back layer and we're going to put that right on our poppy parade cardstock there I'm trying to leave the same amount of border and then I'm just going to cut a piece of the braided trim and I'm going to tie a bow hopefully it's as cute as the one I did when I was practicing it's probably not near long enough uh, but I'm going to get on my knees here and try to tie this. We'll see. It's probably not enough, but we're going to practice with that. Okay, so I'm going to pull, pull those out and then tighten and then do that again. It'll just be a smaller bow today. Since my linen trim did not get cut quite as long this time. It's all right. I'll trim that side. So this bow will just be a little bit shorter than my one that I worked on beforehand. So we're just going to tie that there and kind of puff out that side. But that's super cute. I like it. So that, you can see how, how much bigger my bow was the first time. So this is our second card using... The Buffalo Check stamp set. Um, so this was our first card and then that is our second. And then we have one more that I wanted to do one in a non-traditional Christmas color. And actually it's not a Christmas card now that I'm looking at it. It is probably considered a winter card um, but it's still really pretty. So <laughs> thanks Shelly. Um, my list has had a lot of editing over the years because I don't want to leave anybody out. And so I have such a big family that for the longest time, I I think one year I sent 120 Christmas cards that I handmade out. And I just remember like gasping at the amount of postage that I had to spend <laughs> On that on that year's Christmas list that I have just really really tried to edit down my list because we have been a part in the last 15 years we've been a part of four different churches um, in in our ministry that we have people everywhere and and we have a big family and so leaving anybody out just seemed awful to me so I, I've had to be really careful <laughs> with my, with my Christmas card list. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pull out our big shot for a little bit more cutting. And this one is going to be fun because we're going to, um, use the layer, um, of the Buffalo check to cut out some, em some empty space. Um, and then we're going to fill it, um, sort of. So this is the colors that we're going to do. This is Berry Burst um, cardstock. And I just did Berry Burst on white. Um, and so that is going to be our layer there. But we're going to take this layer and we're actually, I'm going to give you another sneak peek to one of the thinlets um, from the new Snowflake Showcase. This is the biggest snowflake that we have in that set and we are actually going to take it and put it in the middle if I can get it in the middle a um, little bit upper middle on this card and we're going to actually cut that piece out and then we're not going to use the snowflake of that one but we're going to leave that void in our card so that it can go um, so that it can be empty and then we're going to put a silver snowflake right over the top of it so we're going to kind of mix it up a little bit. So because this is a more intricate die, it's better that I'm using the precision base plate. And I just like to take it through my Big Shot and go back and forth a couple more extra times 
um, just to make sure that it's cutting through all of all of the little paper. Um, so we're just going to take that out. And this is what we were looking for. We're looking for that void because when we layer it over our Berry Burst cardstock, it's going to have a little bit of a void. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut out this same snowflake in our silver glimmer paper and we're going to kind of offset it a little bit so that it's you won't even be able to see the void very much. Um, it's going to be super pretty. So I'm just going to take my dye brush, if I can remember where I put it. I was cleaning it out earlier. Okay, from my practice. So I'm going to take my dye brush and go over the top of this um, snowflake because we're going to use that same snowflake for our silver glimmer. Um, and the white that I used for this, um, this base is just a normal whisper white. Um, cardstock. So all those little tiny pieces are being popped out using that brush. So they will leave a little bit of a mess um, in your craft space or on your big shot like mine are, um, but they're super easy to clean up. So I'm just going to set this snowflake, which I totally plan on using on a different card because it came out so cool. Um, I'm going to use this on something else and maybe I'll post the picture of it later. Um, but that is what came out of our card just right there. So we are going to take this same snowflake through our big shot. And we are going to use our silver glimmer paper. Sorry about my sniffling. And we'll take that through the big shot and we'll go back and forth a couple extra times as well. Thanks, Debbie. So that is going to go through once, and then we'll go back, and then I'll do it one more time. My table's a little noisy. All right, so that is all of the big shot work that we're going to do. So I'm going to set this aside. We're also going to be doing a little bit of um, embossing. We're going to take, let's see... There we go. I've used this thinlet now a few times and it definitely is getting a little bit tired for the day. So I'm just gonna put this here. Oh, the glimmer paper is so great. Like I maybe have a couple of tiny little glitter pieces on my hands, but it's nothing compared to what it could be. My husband and my daughter both hate glitter. And so I like to tease them with it every once in a while. Um, at the church office, we have a set of thank you cards that um, one of my friends in the office ordered online. And my husband last Tuesday was saying, we need to use all of these out because I hate, I hate writing in them. So I just, I have to tease him. One day I'll put this on his desk all over the place, but they're so pretty, these thinlets with the glimmer. So this is going to go in the back of, it'll be layered on our card, um, kind of like this. And so we're going to put a sentiment on a stitched shape over the top of this one. So that is what we're going to do to that card. So I'm just going to set my thinlet aside and clean up a little bit. And then I will get out my embossing stuff because I actually remembered to get out my embossing buddy this time so that's good all right so I know that I had another piece but for some reason it is ah there it is okay I was like I know I already cut out this stitch shape this is what we're going to put our sentiment on and we are actually going to use the stamp set sentiment from the Rooted in Nature um, um, stamp set, um, Thinking of You. So this is not a Christmas card, but you could definitely use it in the winter months uh, because of the snowflake. But we're going to take our little embossing buddy here and rub that on our cardstock because I actually remembered it this time. 
so that's always exciting. We're going to take our Versamark ink pad and stamp on that stamp real good. And then I'll cover it up on the side so that I don't get embossing powder on it. And I actually have a piece of paper to set that on while we're stamping. So I'm just going to try really hard not to put my head under. And we're just going to stamp our thinking of you on that. So this is what the Versamark does. It's a watermark stamp. So you could do a tone on tone without having the actual color of ink. Um, but it's used best um, with our stamp and embossing powder. This is the white embossing powder. And I'm just going to sprinkle that over the top of my paper and because I used that embossing buddy I shouldn't have a ton of gathers so it did most of it a little bit more on my thank you part or thinking of you all right much better so the static is thick and I think my embossing buddy is tired so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take my heat tool after I put my embossing powder away so that we don't blow it all over the place. Let's set that pa paper aside. And I will get my heat tool out. I need to unplug my phone because all of my outlets are taken for lights. So I have my heat tool here and I like to turn it on to the second setting for when I'm doing this. I just wait for it to heat up just a little bit and try to pick it up without rubbing on it. So I'm going to hold it and hopefully you can watch this part. Watch the powder change and get more solid. I love embossing. It's so fun to watch that. Change. I'm going to switch sides. Okay. So that is our sentiment after we've heat set it. I'm going to turn off my heat tool and plug back in my phone so that it doesn't die. And we will start putting this one together. Okay, so this last card, what we're going to do is first, I want to put my, I want to raise my sentiment up on my snowflake, but because the snowflake is with glimmer, this is just something that we did with the old glimmer paper, and so I've just kept doing it that way. I'm going to put some Stampin' Dimensionals down in the center because that's where the solid part is um, and then I won't do the edges on there but then I'm going to take take the backings off of my dimensionals of this one I'm sorry if you keep seeing the fly go back and forth he really thinks that this space is the best so then I'm going to take some glue dots and put them on on my Stampin' Dimensionals just like that so that it leaves a little glue dot on top of the dimensional because on glimmer paper um, it used to be I'm not sure if it still is um, it used to be a lot looser glitter um, and so the glue dots would kind of help hold it down to our project a little bit better. So sorry if that was too close to you guys. I was just trying to see where I was going. Um, and so having those glue dots on the dimensionals um, kind of helped ensure that they, here, let's see, I want it to go like that. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our sentiment right just like that. And then, when we put it down, we will use just some snail. 
So on this piece, we're going to take some of the silver metallic edged ribbon on this card, and we're going to do the cheater method again. We're going to go right in the middle of our snowflake. So I'm going to use my paper snips there, and then I'll grab my tape again, and we're going to put this right right in the middle and what I'm gonna do here since our snowflake is kind of big on that and the edges are seen fairly easily um, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful with where our ribbon is and I'm gonna cut that piece off that you can see right now um, so trying to tape it down where you can't see the tape but I'm gonna have to trim the tape on that side because of where it where it ended up taping at. But that is okay. Yes, I figured that tonight would be really fun because we're we're not focusing on so much a lot of different stamps. Um, but that glimmer really does um go so well with such a simple background stamp that you don't need a ton of other things on your cards in order for it to work. So I'm just taking my paper snips and cutting it right to where my edge of tape was so that it, you can't see it on the, the front of the card. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our snail adhesive and go kind of around the snowflake and in the corners there just so that we have all the adhesive that we need taping that down there the fly go away okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this directly on our card here and I'm noticing that my ribbon might be a little bit crooked so sorry about that my nose is out of control all right so that is all of that ribbon that we're gonna use it just adds a little bit of a silver element um, on the sides there and then what we're gonna do is we are going to put snail adhesive down on all of the back of that snowflake there because um, on the back of the glimmer it, it seems to hold it pretty good so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our little snowflake right offset so the bigger pieces um, go over the top where that cutout was um, and then the little pieces go where the big ones are so that is how we're going to offset that one and that is our third card for tonight so I hope you guys like those that was pretty close to a full hour having three cards I'm glad that I did some of that work ahead of time because we would have been way over our time for that so this is our third third card our second card was the enjoy the warmth of the season and then our first card that we did was wrapped in the warmth of Christmas so super super fun cards all using the Buffalo check stamp set and glimmer paper so very very fun I had a lot of fun making them and they've definitely made me really excited to do Christmas cards um, I did use, I think I showed it already, um, but I may not even be able to find it. Um, I used that Buffalo Check stamp on another card that I made, but it is missing at the moment, so I'll have to find it later. Um, I used the little reindeer punch um, for that one from last year, so I hope you guys like them and that they inspire your creativity. Um, I will be, um, I know that last week's live, I still have not put up the card recipes for this week was crazy. I forgot on Sunday how off my week was. I had kids at different times. I was in the office at different times. And so I have been playing catch up on a lot of things, including my housework. So I will try really hard to get those caught up and put on, on my blog, um, and on my YouTube channel for you guys, but I hope you all have a great week 
And again, I'm not going to be live next Sunday um, because of our trunk or treat at our church. Um, I know that I'm going to be exhausted after that afternoon and the morning. So I hope that you all have a great night and a great week. And I will see you again on November 4th um, for another um, Facebook Live Sunday Night Stampin'. Um, and we will be doing the, sh the, um, the new snowflake showcase. Let me see if I can find the stamp set. So this is one of them. This is one of the stamp sets that I'll be doing, um, with that, that night. And then the thinlets, um, we will be using, this is some of them. This is where the big one goes right here. So that is some of the thinlets and then the rest of them are there. And then I have the other stamp set will be here this week. So I'll be working on projects um, to show you guys using this bundle. And then I also have some white, um, it is velvet, velvet paper. So it's only going to be available. These items are only going to be available to customers in the month of November. So I'm going to, that's why I wanted to show them off first, the first part of November in case they really are something that. Um, you're interested in. So I will see you all in a couple of weeks and I'll hopefully be posting on my page a little bit more this week as well. So have a great night and I will see you in two weeks. Bye-bye.